Hi, ladies and gentlemen. A full break job. The fronts, the discs, the rears, the discs, bleeding the brakes, rear differential, like that. Nope. I'm going to take one step at a time, and I'm going to make these videos probably separate. No need for me to show you today how to lift the car, jack it up, take a tire off, get right to the front brakes. If you want to see videos like that, check out the links. I got a whole bunch of them if you want to look for them. So let's get right to the brakes. I just want to keep everybody informed of the worst experience in the car. I'm able to turn my wheel. There's no locking mechanism at all. You never want that on the car to be free flowing. I have just about everything I need I'm not going to be bleeding the brakes right away. I need to get a fish hose. I got cleaner. I got the pads with the Malakot 77 that may not be enough to do all the job, but it's in here somewhere, definitely indeed. It's all at the bottom of the package right here. The hardest part about this is, is putting these little clips on for me. I got a toothbrush brand new from a dentist that I don't use. I got discs and I got a Craftsman Lifetime Impact Driver with the impact bits that are meant for this tool. And it's also for the sockets, but you can't get behind there to free things. And I have here is a caliper brake extractor brand new. So I got a couple of reviews to do and get right to my brake job. Everything I need is right here to do the job. The very first thing I do is make myself comfortable, make sure I got everything I need, and I do things properly. So if I make any mistake, please forgive me. I'm no pro like you. I don't hang on forums and sit there and type my life away making believe I'm a Honda professional. So on that note, look at this. I got a little rust. I need to take care of that right away. But let's get right to the brakes. I need to find the correct socket size to take the caliper off. And I need the correct size to take the caliper housing off. There is only one impact Phillips screw. And this will come right off. I need to lubricate this area before I do anything. This is Blaster Silicone Lubricant. Works in line like a pro. It is very simple to use. Simply just spray it on like so. Now that's how simple it is. If you want to get a can of this, you may check out the link down below and give it a couple of minutes. It will get in there and penetrate. I thank you very much for checking out Blaster Silicone Lubricant. Husky, 14 millimeter. But before I get started, anything I show you, nobody's being sponsored. These are everything I own and what I share to all the way I do it. You don't like it? Look at other people's videos. They do the same thing. So it goes over here. And you want Lefty Lucy. I'm righty tidy, so we need to change that to the correct way. We place it on, we give some force, and off it goes. Now this loose, I'll do the same to the next one and get both of them off. I gotta hold the camera in hand and demonstrate what I'm doing. The next size I'm going to use is a 19 millimeter, but I have to go get a breaker bar. I know I need to get a breaker bar. That fits right over here, and I got two of them to take off. First time doing it. Oh, definitely gonna need a breaker bar. This is a breaker bar. It has a attachment, a half inch to three eighths, I believe. And there's no rotation. 
So you're going to follow your actual thumb. And you want to make sure you don't damage that brake line. I'd rather do damage. I take everything off. Make sure I place everything where I need to place them at and where they come off properly. Got to have a good memory. Take a picture, look at the other side. Do one side at a time. I do things the unconventional way. You do it the professional way. See one, do one, teach one. Get a hanger. I don't have a hanger. So I'm going to just place this out of my way. Be careful of that line there. Now I'm able to get to this bolt back here. But what has happened? My pad stayed on. They didn't go there. They're supposed to stay on fish. So let's see if I could uh, maybe get a jack on this that I could get some weight to lift it up for me. This is an impact driver. They say this is supposed to come off, that I can place this on. And I'd be able to put it on here, but I don't have any room to bang. And that is why I use the hydraulic jack method. I'm going to have such a problem with the other side because I got to pull down and not push up. Everything is freed up. Take the bolts off. Pull the brakes apart. Put to the side. I'm working on this. I purchased this impact driver. Lifetime warranty. It fits directly into the unit. And when I push in, you can see which way it's turning. On the unit, there is an arrow. And over here, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. And I find it very difficult to see. So I'm going to have to get white out and paint it. It's on left. And you can see that my impact stayed in there. So here we go. I'm going to take a nice bang, line it up. Give another bang. And that one's not freeing up. So here we go. I wasn't on there solid. I gave love taps. I can reuse this now. Put this to the side. Wonderful tool to have. Remember early on we used blaster? We spray it a little on. Don't have to spray a lot, just enough. There should be right here M8 screws, bolts that you put in that you could pull this off. I'm going to give some love taps. I only got one. I don't know what happened to the other. As you can hear it, it frees up. I guess I could go to the store and buy another. But I don't need to. Just needed that little persuasion. And there you go. Off it comes. Now, look at that bad boy. Oh, man, that's why things never last forever in the Rust Belt. It's a good time to get yourself some CRC Brake Lean Brake Parts Cleaner. This is Brake Parts. Have something underneath. 
protected. Concrete is not a fan of this stuff. Oh, my good old toothbrush. I get a knife to open up my box. I love this knife, man. Stainless steel, made in Japan. You know how old this knife is? Older than you and me put together. Ah, man, you know when heavy is heavy? Protected. If I match this up to the original, this is the original OEM from Honda. I'm gonna put it on. Oh no, I found a hole in the bag. What to do? Do I return it? It almost looked like a hole in the bag. If you look at this, you can see from the company a little dirt. What I like to do is get this bag open, I place on. I try my best to line up the holes. This one, I got a problem. How did I take this off? I want to put it on the same way. I want to match up one of these screws to that screw there. So this one to there. And hopefully I got it right. Oh boy, righty tidy. I saved my set screw. I put it on. I make sure it's nice and tight and I give a nice little tap. I don't have to be super hot. It's on there nice and tight. Let me get out of my way. I'm good to go. Everything back is on. You don't have to put it on. I put it on so this way I don't have any issues. Let me tell you, things are not made like they used to be. This looks like they painted it, damaged from the factory. And man, let me tell you, I am not happy with this being sprayed from the factory with a coat of paint. But it is Honda. Honda. Definitely indeed says it right on there. There are the letters. They're all over here. Unbelievable. While I got the caliper housing off, I'm going to grease my slider pins in a nice, comfortable place. When this comes from the factory, they come on. Sometimes they will fall off, as you can see here. They don't set up these two, and that's why I laid them out, everything for each of the brakes. So I don't need to have this particular one at this given time, so let me put them away and to the side. They only give you one package of Malakot. I need to do all four. They don't give it to the rear brakes at all. So I want to take a nice picture in my mind how everything is set up. And that's exactly how I'm going to install it. This is going to go into the back, and I want to make sure these clips lock into place. Don't worry about me touching this because I got brake clean cleaner. All right, this is on. This matches up. Put that to the side. I want to look at this side, the front. I need to turn this around and I need to put these clips on. You can see they simply just slide on. 
be careful because you may uh, cut your fingers and so forth with the sharp edges. There's one arm and there goes the other arm. Now I say to take a mental note because you're going to find out that the first time doing this you're going to have so much fun of these clips popping off when they got these little loops that lock in. So right now my main purpose is not about these retainer clips and this it's about these I want to make sure I got movement and as long as I got some movement that's good I slide back the boot but before I do that I take my brush and I want to clean it get all the dust off I'm not perfect in doing things but you slide the boot off get yourself a scissors and cut a little corner Oh, uh, my knife's got a scissors in it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread this off. Even though it's got some in there. That's enough to lubricate it spring and fall. I'll do that again for you. I push down the boot. I open this up. I get enough in there. And that's enough in there to lube the unit. This is now lubricated and ready to go. I put this to the side. I don't need it right yet until I get to these retainer clips. To get these off, it's loads of fun. Just simply pull back. What you want to do is you want to clean this all up. Get all the dust off. Remember where this came off of, the back. Do the same thing for this side. You're going to just simply maybe push with your fingers or lift off. Remember how it comes off. And you're going to clean all this up. Now the hardest part is these clips. Remember how they pop off. Because that's how they're going to go on. So what you're going to do is you're going to clean this. Look at all this dust. I'm going to clean this off camera. If you have trouble remembering how this came off your car, go back to the car and look at the other side. This goes on this particular way. It should snap on with your fingers. I take the other one. It cannot go on this way because of this bracket here. And you simply snap it on. Be careful. You may want to wear gloves. A little late for me to tell you that right now. I take malachite and I put just enough in on each of the corners, the ends. And that's where I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to now do this. Make sure it all gets a nice coating. If I need to add more, I'll do so. I don't want to heavily douse it. I want to make sure I got a nice amount of paste. If I need to put some on the brush, I'll do so. Just take a look at 45,000 miles. Now, I change this out half the time at 20 plus thousand miles. I could have went another 10,000 miles. I'd rather do it now than wait for this to make a squeaky noise right over there. That's your squeak sensor right there. I got a long way to get to the next one. Normally you could just replace them without the clips. So as you do this on the inside, 
It is pressured on, as you can see. Super difficult to do today. It's on. Very difficult to do on a very simple brake system. I bought this brake extractor, this caliper tool set, and I'm going to try to figure out how to use it as is. I don't have it hooked up the correct way for me. So I'm going to you know, take one and hook it up. Now, this is the tool that I guess righty tidy and I need to put it on like so and that's going to push things in I can't slide it into place but uh, does it fit in this particular way it locks in no yeah I got the sun in my eyes so it's going to make it a little harder for me to see what I'm doing now, I'm not sure the size I'm going to use. I'll figure it out. I guess the pin here goes in this particular way. And if I do that, that's going to go in there and lock into place. So I want to make sure I get the right one. That looks like it caps over. And those don't go in the correct way. Bigger is better than smaller. So I'm going to match up my holes, put this on, and I'm going to slide this down as far as I can go. I do apologize if I cannot show this 100% the right way. Tighten this up. Make sure it's leveled. And just let gravity do its job. This is a nice and easy tool to use. It presses the brakes in nice and slow. As you can see. It kind of slips off. You get it back on there. And you take your time. Nobody says it's going to be one, two, three. So if you are looking for one of these extractors, just uh, make sure you get the right one. I wish this was a little bit better design. And I'll get the job done slowly. I'm always backing off and centering it. About five minutes later, I'm uh, just where I need to be at. I just want to make sure I sink it in just about where it needs to be at. And there we go. Now, all I got to do is just loosen this up. I don't have to worry about the back piece falling off. And there you go. Now, the number I used for this, not written on the back side, but it's written over here as K1. And you just simply pass it through. And you, now you put this away and use it for the other side.
I need to clean this. I don't need to clean this, but I do need to clean it. Always good to keep it clean. I put everything back and I'm all done. I got my two bolts. Need to find my 19 millimeter breaker bar. And I need to put this on the correct way. Now we all know how this all came apart and you know how to put these 19 millimeter bolts back on. There you go. My hardest part wasn't getting these bolts. My hardest part was this, getting the pads on. So yeah, now I gotta make sure I make this nice and tight. And I got a problem. Think I'm gonna have to go find a brand new socket. The socket's busted. Wow. So here we are. Let's get this on nice and tight the best I can do with what I got. I'm almost completed with one half that took me hours on end. Ah, yeah, that is what I love. Things coming back together nice and easy. Put the bolts on. You're done. The only thing I now need to do is bleed my brakes. And I'm going to have to get a fish line and put it on there. Righty is tidy. And once I get it on there, I loosen up the 10 millimeter bolt, press the brake, tighten it, repeat it many times with the actual amount of putting one of these cans in for each of the tires. So once I do that, I'm all done. Righty is tidy. Which way am I going? I'm <laughs> going the opposite way. So I alternate. I'm done. Congratulate yourself, people. Make sure you do this nice and tight. And you are completed. Whew. I gotta go clean up. I gotta put this tire back on. I do have to give a, a tap of the brakes to make sure it holds on nice and strong. But this should have taken me 15 minutes to do, no questions asked, without those uh, difficulty clips. I wasn't having fun at all with the clips, but at least I got it on. Uh, the pros of this was, I saved a ton of money. The con is, man, why did they paint over that? To protect it from shipment, spraying... Uh, it won't help. Uh, is that going to interfere with the uh, actual pads glazing it? Maybe that's something new that we never know. On that note, I'm Fish. Have a great day. Woo! Difficulty. Three out of fives for you. Okay, I got the other side to do. Oh, man! How simple could that be when you got the right tools? Right? And you heard it break. Now you turn the wheel, common sense, to get in there. <laughs> well, I don't need to show you how to do this side, but that's how you get the other side. Take your time. Get the job done right. Save yourself a lot of money, a lot of time. You just do it right. Went for a ride. And you can see that special coating has disappeared. Something that nobody knows when a ship rotors discs, they are that way. Discs are, ah, you know, well protected today with the way things go. So I hope you could kind of understand, hey, look at that. That didn't look right to me. There you go. Job well done.